Hey everybody, Home Slice Center here, and in today's video, we've got some extremely fun battles from the Master Premier Cup, featuring a perfect IV, fully maxed out Shadow Empoleon that is running the surprise nuke move of Blizzard. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, Halcyon Wild, who you may remember from a Darmanitan feature earlier in the week. Now, Halcyon is running a Dragon Tail Garchomp on the lead, the Blizzard Shadow Empoleon as the save switch, and the signature Flash Ganon Magnezone as the closer. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches, and let's check out the team in the Master Premier Cup. Hopping into the first match, picking up a pretty nice lead Garchomp for Shadow Metagross. Opponent safe switches to Gudra, but here's the thing. This is not bad for Garchomp. Garchomp can very comfortably survive an Aqua Tail and continue to apply a lot of pressure to the opponent. Garchomp is going to farm up to the Outrage and bait with the Sand Tomb. Is the opponent willing to use a shield here? The Sand Tomb bait is unsuccessful, but in comes Empoleon. Empoleon is going to go for a full Steel Wing farm down. The Gudra is able to make the Thunder Punch, and that does significant damage to the Shadow Empoleon. Opponent sends in their final Pokemon, and it's Dragonite. Oh my... Dragonite can survive a drill peck. Will they respect the blizzard? They do not the one hit KO. Down goes Dragonite. And all they have left is going to be that Metagross. And Metagross will now have no way of resetting this defense debuff from the Sand Tomb for the rest of the game. Looking to switch out, but the switch clock just not yet available. But from here, this is a pretty straightforward win condition for the Magnezone. Or Magnezone can just farm up to the back-to-back -back wild charges. Shadow Metagross will full send the Earthquake, and Earthquake, I mean, it's just, the pacing is not on Metagross's side in this matchup. We are going to see the bait, but we're actually going to see Magnezone not even throw the move, going for the bad manners farm down here. Metagross makes it to the Meteor Mash, but they cannot get to the Earthquake, and that is going to be a win. Moving to the next match, Garchomp versus Gyarados. We see the save switch to the Shadow Empoleon, and it is going to be a Waterfall Gyarados. So the Waterfalls are going to be resisted due to Empoleon's water typing. Empoleon will commit the shield on the Crunch. The Crunch does get the defense drop, which is a little bit unfortunate. Empoleon full sending the Blizzard once again, and again it connects. Opponent now going to send out Excadrill, but Excadrill will immediately have to give up a shield, as Hydro Cannon would be extremely threatening. And this is the goal, try and bait out the ground type with the Empoleon, and that way hopefully Magnezone can do well in the back. Excadrill tries for a farm down, they're forced to give up two shields, and now in comes Garchomp. Garchomp is very bulky, so tanking drill runs is not a particular problem for Garchomp, as Garchomp can actually survive two here. That's one of the really nice things about Garchomp, one of the highest stat product Pokemon allowed in this format. Garchomp just trying to make it to the Sand Tomb and gets to the Sand Tomb. This is super effective damage onto the Excadrill, and it just does not pick up the KO. However, we might see an aggressive Volt Switch farm down here. Opponent is going to switch out in the back. They have Togekiss, and Togekiss is now going to be hit with the Flash Cannon. Not wanting to debuff his defense with the Wild Charge, so we already see the Flash Cannon pick up the KO. In comes the Excadrill. These Volt Switches are double resisted. Opponent going to make it to a move, but they only get one, and we know it's the Gyarados in the back. They go for the Rock Slide. A little bit of bad manners since they know they cannot get the win. In comes the Gyarados. Double super effective Wild Charge. One hit KO, and that is a good game. Great lead in the next match, leading Garchomp versus Haxorus. Opponent is going to save switch to a Shadow Snorlax. This team does not have an amazing response to a Shadow Snorlax save switch. Garchomp is just going to stay in here and build up to the Outrage. Outrage would hit for massive damage. Opponent does decide to respect it with a shield, and it ends up being a CMP tie. The shield by the Garchomp, it's an Outrage Snorlax, which means you can safely send in Empoleon. Empoleon, these Steel Wings are adding up quite a bit, and the nice thing is that Snorlax will only be able to hit for resisted damage with the Body Sam since they have revealed their entire moveset. Empoleon farming up a ton of energy. All the Snorlax is able to make another charge attack. Body Slam will get the Empoleon low. We already see the shield from the Empoleon. Aggressive switch into the Haxorus. Oh no, say it ain't so. Goodbye, Haxorus. That's a one-hit KO. In comes Magnezone, unable to get the farm down, as Empoleon will make the Shadow Hydro Cannon. Shadow Hydro Cannon would do quite a bit, so we will see the shield. But now the Magnezone is stuck in a truly miserable spot against the Garchomp. Unless they too are running Flash Cannon here, but they're not. They have Mirror Shot, 
And now, I mean, this is just double super effective damage. Sand Tomb is a pretty poor move in terms of damage, but it sure doesn't look it when going up against Magnezone. Opponent realizes they do not have a win con, and they will resign the match. Terrible lead in the next match. As we see Garchomp into Florges, Empoleon safe switch answered by Rhyperior. Good to bait out the Rhyperior, but... I mean, these Mudslaps are just shredding through the Empoleon. Empoleon shields up the Breaking Swipe, needing to reserve as much HP as possible to potentially try and make a second Hydro Cannon, and just gets there. My goodness. Make it into Hydro Cannon number two. This is going to be forcing a shield from the opponent, and now in comes Garchomp. Garchomp looking to absorb Breaking Swipes, make it to the Sand Tomb, because you have to get rid of the Rhyperior if you want a chance to win the game. Rhyperior able to outpace once again. This is survivable for the Garchomp. The Sand Tomb is available. Opponent, oh, this is really bad. They save the Rhyperior, and this is going to be a, now a basically impossible game to win, because... Florges is going to be able to be knocked out by the Flash Cannon, but then you can just bring in right here, and these Mud Slaps are going to absolutely crush the Magnezone. Flash Cannon picks up the KO. They can just send back in the right here, but they don't! They send in a Primarina! What is the opponent doing? The opponent, I guess, worried about a Flash Cannon, but Magnezone never could have got there. They fully sacrifice an entire Primarina when that was their win con, and now they're going to lose. It just goes to show sometimes it's worth playing out end games because opponents can make mistakes and in that case that mistake ends up being game losing for the opponent. We've got a battle of dragons in the next matchup. Garchomp versus Dragonite. Dragon Claw does not KO here, but it does quite a lot of damage. So we will see the shield by the Garchomp. Garchomp building up to the outrage, baiting with the Sand Tomb. Most Dragonites will call this here. This Dragonite will call it as well. And we're going to see a switch and a catch of the Dragon Claw onto the Shadow Empoleon. Shadow Empoleon, not going to take a ton of damage there. Opponent is going to send out Waterfall Gyarados. A bit unfortunate to see the Gyarados here, as you definitely prefer it to see it against the Magnezone. They will fire off the Crunch. The Crunch, oh my goodness, gets the defense drop. But Empoleon still makes it to the Blizzard. The Blizzard, massive damage. And that nearly picks up the one-hit KO onto Gyarados. In comes Magnezone. Magnezone able to get the Volt Switch down. Opponent, whatever they had in back, did not want to see a Magnezone as they will resign the match. Decent lead in the next match, Garchomp versus Annihilate. If it doesn't have Ice Punch, this is a dominant win for the Garchomp. If it has Ice Punch, then it gets a little more tricky. They throw on 7, and it is going to be the Ice Punch. Garchomp shields. We see a safe switch into a Dragon Breath Gyarados, and Magnezone is really happy about that decision. Magnezone is going to absorb the Aqua Tail, can throw two more Volt Switches safely. Magnezone tries for the farm down, but the Gyarados is able to hang on and make it to the last second Aqua Tail. It's now low enough where the counter that goes through plus the minus two from the defense will actually be able to knock out. So unfortunately, Magnezone is not going to be able to get both of those moves. In comes Garchomp. Garchomp got a full send of the Outrage. The Outrage does get shielded. And by guaranteeing this final shield, then th things could get a little bit interesting. And it's Togekiss in the back. So this game is over. Look at the steel wing damage. Togekiss in absolute shambles. Hydro Cannon is going to be able to pick up the KO. In comes Annihilate, and Annihilate getting knocked out by a Hydro Cannon as well. So, a bit of a scary lead, but the opponent was running double flyer, so they had to try and bait out the Magnezone, and by giving up Switch, really put them in a difficult position. Speaking of difficult positions, leading Garchomp into a Mamoswine, never a fun time, but the Empoleon save switch is unanswered by the opponent. Empoleon able to fire off a Hydro Cannon, grab a shield. The Steel Wings already have the Mamoswine below half HP once this next Steel Wing registers. They send in Dragonite. Empoleon would love to get to the Blizzard. Empoleon just gonna let it go, hoping the opponent is gonna go for the bait, and they do. All right, it's Blizzard time. Blizzard has not yet been respected. Empoleon going for the Blizzard. The shield, no! It all goes wrong as an opponent finally respects the fact that Empoleon can learn Blizzard. Going to get a one volt switch, energy head start, and then send in the Garchomp. Garchomp going to be hit with Dragon Claw after Dragon Claw. Garchomp going to be shielding Dragon Claw number two as it looks to try and commit to a farm down. But the clock is up. In comes the Mamoswine. Mamoswine will be hit with the Sand Tomb. Sand Tomb, I don't think will quite knock out here. Mamoswine, 
should be able to hang on, but the Dragon Tail after will pick up the KO. They can just send back in the Dragonite if they really want to, but instead they're going to send out a Gyarados. Oh boy. And Gyarados, so long buddy. We'll be seeing you. Double super effective wild charge. One hit KO. In comes the Dragonite. Can Dragonite make the superpower? No, it cannot. It gets there, but the Volt Switch KOs, and that will be a win. We have Garchomp versus Garchomp in the next match. Opponent switches out into Gyarados. A lot of people utilizing the Gyarados safe switch in Magnezone. Very happy with that decision. Opponent goes for the crunch, fishing for a debuff. And the decision to go for the crunch ends up being a bit of a costly one as they're unable to make two moves. Back in comes the Garchomp, but this is where Flash Cannon can be valuable. As Flash Cannon actually allows Magnezone to deal some nice damage there. Unfortunately, Magnezone not going to be able to make another Flash Cannon. How well does the opponent know their counts? They don't know them well enough, and they shield a triple resistant move. Oh, that's got to be a really painful feeling. Garchomp is going to respect the Outrage. Opponent in the back. Oh no, they have Metagross, and it's all over for the opponent. There's just no way to win this game. The Sand Tomb will be no shielded. They're making the correct call of no shield in the first. But Garchomp just going to spam out these moves, going for another Sand Tomb as soon as it gets it. Opponent, forced to fire off energy. And honestly, you can just let this go and steel wing down if you want to. But we are going to see the shield from the Garchomp. And now the switch to the Empoleon. Empoleon gets the steel wing down. In comes the Garchomp. Garchomp able to make it to a charge attack. It is going to be the Earth Power. Down goes Empoleon, but one Dragon Tail means this is game over for the opponent. We've got same leads in the next match, Garchomp versus Garchomp. This one is running Dragon Tail, however. Going to be farming up quite a lot of energy. These Dragon Tails are tearing through the HP, and we're going to see Halcyon fire off the Sand Tomb. The Sand Tomb is no shielded opponent, is going to reset the debuff, send in Metagross, but Metagross will be debuffed with a Sand Tomb. It's the right call for the opponent to no shield here, and they are going to let that through. In comes Magnezone, but the opponent is still in a pretty decent position, as the opponent is going to be able to force a shield with the threat of a double super effective Earthquake, and as long as the opponent just never shields their Metagross, they're in a pretty nice spot. And that is going to be because they can just send back in their own Garchomp that has energy. The Garchomp is going to be able to absolutely cook the debuff Magnezone. And then the opponent will still have a shield advantage for their final Pokemon. In comes the Empoleon Clock. Not up for the opponent. They're able to switch at the last second. And it's Ursaluna in the back. Ursaluna could have been a big problem for the Empoleon. But due to the switch timer not being up, the opponent is now in a very difficult position. The Empoleon was able to get a massive energy head start. And starting basically up a Hydro Cannon means that Empoleon will get three Hydros before two Thunder Punches are reached on the Ursaluna. And this is a Shadow Hydro Cannon. Ursaluna taking the super effective damage. It has a big staff product, but it will get KO'd. In comes the Garchomp. That gets farmed down as well. And that's game over. Garchomp versus Gyarados in the next match. Two better responses in the back, so we will see the safe switch to the Empoleon. Checking to see if the opponent has anything that, that the Magnezone would not want to see in the back. But a lot of times, Waterfall Gyarados is paired with Fairy types, which forms a pretty decent core, unless, of course, you do have a Magnezone, which Halcyon does have. Empoleon going to fire off the Blizzard, and there it is, able to connect. The Steel Wing's just not enough to pick up the knockout, as Gyarados will make a last-second Aqua Tail, and then they actually get sniped with a Machamp. So the opponent... Honestly, Machamp is a Pokemon that I have not seen yet in this Master Premier rotation. Cross Chop, I mean, it did get buffed in a previous season, but it still just looks incredibly underwhelming going up against a neutral matchup like Garchomp. The Sand Tomb is going to be no shielded. Opponent will go for another Cross Chop. This would not KO, but looking to preserve some HP on the Garchomp. So Garchomp is now going to go for the full farm down. Garchomp exiting with energy. It's Togekiss in the back, and there's the fairy type we were talking about. And look at the Volt switches go. My goodness, opponent gives most of a free Volt switch there. We're going to see the shield by the Magnezone on the Ancient Power. And now Magnezone is just going to try and farm this all the way down. Opponent realizes there is no winning this game, and they will resign the match. Hopping into the final match, disastrous lead, Garchomp versus Avalug, the safe switch to the Shadow Empoleon. I don't know what the opponent had in the back, but they clearly wanted nothing to do with Empoleon. My best guess is maybe it was Avalug Double Fairy, and they just got core broken to smithereens, and they will immediately concede the match.
All in all, Shadow Empoleon, I would not recommend this as a top Pokemon for climbing. Halcyon mentioned that he did climb 200 ELO with the team, but I would say that's probably more of just the Battler being good rather than Shadow Empoleon being top tier Master Premier meta. However, I do think that this honestly shows that the Master Premier meta is one of the healthier metas that we've had this season. It feels like there is a lot of variety that you can win with if you end up playing very consistently. And in this case, the surprise nukes can work quite well as well, as he was able to land a lot of blizzards, and as we saw in that previous shoutcast with Darmanitan, when he had the flash cannon Magnezone save switch, people were just falling for that flash cannon on Magnezone left, right, and center. So overall, let me know down in the comments, how has your experience been with the Master Premier Cup? I know it's an expensive league to build for just because everything does need to be powered all the way up, but not having legendaries, it's a lot easier to 50 a Pokemon that isn't a legendary because you can just have a tier three mega active and catch it when it's in the wild. So you can do it entirely free to play, which is quite nice. But for me, this has probably been one of my favorite metas this season. It feels like there's a lot of neutral play and I've seen a pretty nice variety of strategies and teams having success, which to me feels like like a pretty nice meta overall anyways thank you guys so much for watching if you're enjoying the content make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and a special thank you as always to our members here on youtube the support guys provide is sincerely appreciated so thank you guys oh so very much and until next time i've been home slice henry